All right. All right, Ed. Get a hold of Flash, quick. Why, they have them? Yeah. Only X-26. Only X-26. X-26. Calling X-26. Calling X-26. X-26, yeah, X-26, go ahead. There he is. Watch out, Flash. A troll plane scouting. Try to land and save that load. All right, I got you. Haven't you had enough? It's after three o'clock now. Well, what of it? I can't watch the beans and the clock, too. Oh, come on, Vine. We're going home. Well, all right, then you go ahead. Well, please leave me some money. Ding dong dong me. Could you hear me? I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Chen. Well, you got some dough for me? I have bet report on you. Say, there wasn't a chance for me to land that load. And I wasn't going to let them catch me with it. And you expect me to pay you for murdering my countrymen? Say, what is this? You mean I don't get my dough? That's it. All right. You'll get another flyer. But I'm not through. Thank you, too. This is an exquisite little piece, Ching Shu. Yes. Where did you get it? One of my cousins brought this to me. Hi, Jake. Hello, Flash. What do you use your photo with? Help yourself. Come in. Come in. Yeah. Yes, 
This is Insulter Inspector, I mean Inspector Sullivan, yeah. If you come down to Chinatown, I'll show you how to get that whole smuggling ring. What's that? Who is this? Never mind who it is. This is the goods. And if you rush down to the Canton house, I'll even lead you to the chief of that ring. Yeah. All right. Where will I meet you? that call and get me market 44 quick immigration bureau morgan talking well this is sullivan get the raid squad to the canton house and i'll meet you there all right And I follow the telephone. I think police come quick. Get our cousins out quickly. All right. I think you'd better go, Mr. Moss. Number one, man. Bye. For the last time, will you go home with us now? No. Very well, then. Good night. Come on, folks. Get in here with the rest of them. Come on. Oh, but I've got to get out of here. I'm... You'll stay here till we get through with you. But look, I'm Viola Avery. And if my father ever learns I've been in this raid, I'll be in an awful jam. You're in an awful jam now. I beg your pardon, Inspector. This young lady really is Viola Avery. Did I say she wasn't? But you don't understand. She's Judge Avery's daughter. Federal Judge Avery? None other. Well, why didn't she say so in the first place? And it'll be all right if we proceed, Inspector? Well, I... Oh, thank you very much. I shall remind the judge of your kindness, Mr. Mercedes. Well, anyway, I thank you, Sir Walter Raleigh. You certainly saved me from the morning paper's mud. Well, I don't mention it. The pleasure was all mine, I assure you. Shall we take this taxi? <laughs> there we go. I don't understand what inspector speak about. Shut up! Open up now. Where have you got those Chinamen hidden? Come on, speak up! Shut up! Open up! It is Mr. Fine. Ah, oh, shut up! 
What are you going to do? I give up. They got those gentlemen away in a truck, Inspector. What about the man that phoned to me? We found him next door in a phone booth. Dead. Dead? Dead. I called the coroner. All right, I'll check up on that. I'm going to hold you all for investigation. You'll stay right where you are now. Everybody. What were you doing alone in Chinatown at this hour in the morning? Watching shirt buttons move from one pile to another. Oh, Fantan, huh? Yes. Were you at it, too? <laughs> oh, heavens no. Have a cigarette. No, I was searching for some unusual curio. And you found me. Think of that. <laughs> Don't tell me you've reached that sedate age where a man starts to collect curios. Oh, it's a disease, really. I must confess that Orientals have a peculiar, irresistible fascination for me. Hmm. You arouse my curiosity. I or my collection? The collection, of course. I was afraid of that. Anyway, I'd like to have you see my collection. Oh, by the way, I'm having a uh, cocktail party tomorrow afternoon. Just a few people. Won't you come? Why not bring your father? I'd be honored to meet him. Please come. Be terribly disappointed if you don't. Now I understand why you were able to sway Sullivan so easily. You are persuasive. Then you will come? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you haven't been very successful on this case, have you, Sullivan? Well, uh, you see, uh, it's just one of those things. Now, take last night, for instance. I was... Uh, I know all about last night. No need going through all of that again. I'm not censuring your failure, but we must break up that ring and stop this smuggling of Chinamen. I believe your methods are antiquated. And I'm going to switch both of you to new partners. Younger men from a new school. Sullivan, you will turn this case over to Baxter and become his partner. I... I I'm to be under Baxter? Why, why, that young fellow's a rookie. I've been 24 years in this service now, and... That's just what's the matter with you. I think you can learn something from Baxter's methods. You called me? Come in, Baxter. I'm switching Sullivan to you and your partner to Morgan. Study this case and see what you can do. Sullivan is at your disposal right now. That's all. I don't know what this department's coming to. If it wasn't that I'd be eligible for a pension next year, I'd resign right now. Don't take it so hard, Sullivan. The only reason Graves teamed me with you is because, well, you're handicapped with Morgan. Just what I thought, no? I, I know there couldn't be anything wrong with me, and I, I figured that... Uh, hey, Sullivan, about this case, did you quiz Miss Avery? Why, um, no. Well, then how did you know it was Miss Avery? Anybody could have used her name, you know. Say, young fella, I've been too many years in this business not to know what I'm doing. How did I know? Yes, how? Well, how? Hmm. You mean how, huh? Because I have Miss Avery's purse right here with her identification in it. That's how. Oh, she gave you her purse before she left. Of course not. We found it there after she left. What difference does it make? None. Either way, she might have been an imposter. Anybody could have found Miss Avery's purse and used her name. Who knows, maybe those people are the masterminds you were after. Do I look that stupid? Well, no. You don't look it. 
How did you mean that? Well, how much longer must I wait for my newspaper? Oh, only one moment, Father. Why are you so interested? Are you expecting to see your name blazoned in the headlines? Yeah, where were you last night? Oh, I wasn't anywhere in particular. Oh. Beg your pardon, miss. There's an inspector from the immigration office on the phone. Oh, uh, uh, tell him I'm at breakfast. Uh, I did, miss, but he's very insistent. What now? Oh, now, Father, don't excite yourself. I can explain. Uh, I'll say you can, but never to my satisfaction. Uh, do you wish to speak to him, or uh, shall... I'll talk to him. Oh, I'll talk to him. Hello? Yes, this is Viola Avery. I am a raid? Uh, oh, of course not. Why, how preposterous. Just checking, Miss Avery, that's all. We have your purse. It was found there. Can you explain that coincidence? No, I, I can't account for it at all. All right, Miss Avery, thank you. There you are, Sullivan. The real Viola Avery knows nothing about it. Well, that don't prove these two people were connected with the case either, does it? Do innocent people use fictitious names? Never pass up anything, Sullivan. It's our job to suspect everything and everybody. Oh, yeah? Maybe I'm the one we're looking for. Oh, no. You'd have been discovered long ago. Why, sure, I... Uh, hey. What are you talking about? Well, there's no clue here, Sullivan. Well, you don't say. I kind of expected you to pull a couple of Chinamen out of it. And if you can't explain it, I won't believe it. Young lady, if I ever find out now, that look, you... Now, all right, all right, Father. Yes, I know what you'll do, but wait until you find out. Mm. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must run. Bye. How long are you going to stare at that purse? Till I formulate a plan. Miss Avery is here. Send her in. Good morning. How do you do, Miss Avery? I came for my purse. That's the girl. She's the one who's in the raid. Why did you lie to me over the phone, young lady? Oh, well, you see, I... I had to. It would have been very unpleasant if I told the truth at that moment. How do I know you're telling the truth now? Well, can't you take my word for it? In my business, I can't take anybody's word. What are you hiding, Miss Avery? The old family skeleton hiding in the closet, if you must know. <clears throat> Still evasive, hmm? Oh, uh, <clears throat> oh, my goodness, I'm due home right this moment. Just uh, a moment. Yes. Have you a car? No, I haven't. Well, then I'll drive you. Oh, don't bother. The taxis are still running. Oh, uh, but I insist. And as much as you're late already, I wouldn't think of detaining you. Besides, there are some things I must know. Hmm. What is this, an inquisition? Call it that if you wish. Sullivan, you go down to the morgue and see what you can find on that body. I'll meet you there. Well, Sherlock Holmes, have you got the, the handcuffs? Oh, let me remind you that I probably won't relish your company any more than you will mine. If it wasn't for that pension, I'd resign right now. What is it, Jules? The report is to see Miss Avery, sir. She isn't at home, and they refuse to leave without a statement. Oh, very well. Judge Avery. Uh, a little story for the Herald. Quiet, 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 you hyenas. Now, one at a time. We understand that Miss Avery was in a raid in Chinatown last night. What? Uh, we want a statement from you, Judge. Well, you tell your scandal-mongering editors that Miss Avery was not in a raid in Chinatown last night, or any other night. How do you know, Judge? How, how do I know? Why, why, uh, I, we... My daughter was with me. That's how I know. Now get out, all of you. Come on, no, but Judge. Well, no use of waiting. We've heard like no further statement. statement. We'll get it from I'm you. very sorry. All right, just trying to get you. Sorry, sorry bother you. Yes, well, it's too bad a man can't. Lovely day, isn't it? You mean it was until you ruined it? Well, why don't you start your third degree? What are you waiting for? Very well. Why did you lie? Simply because I didn't want Father to know I was in that raid. If he ever gets wind of this, he'll have 17 fits. 
especially if he finds out I was down there alone. Alone? Yes. Well, that man wasn't my escort. Just a chance acquaintance. Very interesting. Name and address. I don't, I don't know. know. You know, you remind me of Sullivan. You meet people, accept their word, and learn nothing. How do you know this man isn't a criminal? Let me remind you that the man was a perfect gentleman, which is more than can be said for you. <laughs> well, gentlemen can also be criminals. Oh, not this one. Did you ever hear of a curio collector committing crimes? But well, they're always the victims. Just what does this gentleman collect? Odd bits of string? This gentleman happens to possess one of the most valuable collection of oriental curios in this country. Did you ever see it? Well, I'm going to. This afternoon at the cocktail hour, I should be privileged to gaze upon the one and only imperial robe of the Ming Dynasty. I suppose a, a, a man who owns such treasures could be, would naturally be criminal. He might. Of course, it's improbable, but not impossible. <sighs> Well, is there anything else you'd like to know? Sure, I... Oh, there you are, Miss Avery. We couldn't get anything out of the judge, so we thought we'd talk to you. Yes, well, I'm right. from the Star, and I'd like to get your very own story about it. Uh, you were there. We want a definite statement from you, Miss Avery, regarding that raid last night. Well, uh... Oh, uh... You got the wrong tip, boys. Miss Avery wasn't in the raid. How do you know? Who are you? Inspector Baxter, Immigration Bureau. Miss Avery lost her purse. It was found on a girl who was picked up at the Canton House. Case of mistaken identity, that's all. Sorry to disappoint you. Okay, Inspector. Your word's good enough. You sure killed a good story. Oh, thank you. I don't know what to say. Oh, don't say anything. Because <laughs> I, uh, I didn't lie for your sake. I didn't want those news hawks to spoil my plan. Oh. Well, sorry, I flattered you. Oh. Oh, there you are, eh? I've been waiting for you. Now, see here. Uh... Oh, this is Inspector Baxter, my father, Judge Avery. How are you, Judge? Inspector, eh? Hmm. Well, what's she done now? <laughs> Nothing, sir. Then why are you here? Well, uh, well, you see, uh... Uh, your daughter, Viola, and I went to school together. Oh, really? Since when do they have male students at Wellesley? Wellesley? Oh, <clears throat> well, you see, we went to different schools together. I was at Harvard when she was at Wellesley. <laughs> All right, yeah. Now, see here, young lady. I want the truth about that Chinatown affair. Reporters have been here, hundreds of them. Now, were you or were you not in that raid? Oh, that would have been impossible, sir. Your daughter was with me last night. Oh, I... Pardon me, sir. Mr. Watson is on the phone. Oh, very well, George. Excuse me. Oh, gee, you're a grand liar. I could have kissed you right then and there. Yeah? Well, why didn't you? Well, well, anyway, I shan't forget how gallant you've been. All right, how about dinner tonight? Oh, I can't. I have an engagement. I'll take the first open date. Oh, I'd love to go along sometime when there's something exciting happening. Oh, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I couldn't take you with me while I'm on duty. Very well. You're not interesting off duty. Well, we'll compromise. You take me with you this afternoon while I'm on duty and we'll see your escort's collection. Snooping around a gentleman's home? What do you take me for? A beautiful but foolish creature who needs a protective escort to the devil's den. Nothing doing. Besides, I told you I didn't know his name and address. What did you say it was? All right, Sherlock Holmes, you find out. I will. I'll meet you there. Not if I catch you shadowing me. I'll be littling. I wouldn't stoop to such antiquated methods. I'll be waiting for you with a cocktail in my hand. Goodbye. Have you found anything, Sullivan? No, not a thing. No identification left. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. But we must learn this man's identity. Yeah. You put that corpse through a third degree and see if he'll talk to you. He wouldn't even whisper to me. Maybe you didn't use the right kind of language. 
Then what kind of language would you use on a corpse? The one language you don't understand, deduction. Huh? Hey, you can't make a monkey out of me like this. I know enough to know that deduction ain't a language. It's arithmetic. Say, look, Sullivan. What does this read? My eyes must be getting bad. Is there something written there? Listen, don't you see that pinpoint design shaped like a pair of wings? Oh, that. Oh, anybody could see that. Well, doesn't it speak to you? Either I'm stone deep or it's talking awful low. Hey, smell that. Does that tell you anything? Hey, what is this? Read this, hear that, smell this. Are you trying to drive me to resign? No. No, Sullivan. I'm simply trying to prove to you that dead men do tell tales. Now look. There were wings sewed on there. See, this man must have been an aviator. Evidently, the wings were taken off a long time ago. That means he must have been permanently grounded. But the oil spots and the smell of this jacket show that he's been working at his trade recently. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why couldn't that flyer have been an automobile driver? <laughs> Listen. Did you ever see an automobile driver leave marks like this? See those lines inside the knees? That's some hole in the stick when occasionally has to use his hands for something else. Look at these gloves. One of them's practically new. The other one's been used. An automobile driver uses both hands. A flyer only uses one. This one is left-handed. Hmm. Sounds pretty good, even if I don't believe it. Now that you're going that far, What's his name? Ah, that's what you're going to tell me. Now get a picture of that stiff and check it with all permanently grounded flyers. And that way we ought to be able to identify him. I'll see you at the office later. Hey, where are you going? To a cocktail party. To a cocktail party? You're leaving me to do all the work. Hmm. If a stranger tries to crash this party, don't let him in. Mm, how intriguing. <laughs> As you wish, my dear. <gasps> a cocktail? No, thank you. Oh, it's a lovely place. Tolerable. The thing I prize most is my curio collection. Of course. I'd like to see that too. You know, I've spent a great deal of time in the audience. Many years. I bought some fascinating things. Oh, it's gorgeous. That's a beautiful place. Yes, I see. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, you haven't met all of my guests. So, uh, Miss Avery, uh, may I present Mr. Keeler? Why, how nice to meet you here. Well, oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Uh... Keeler, the name's Keeler. Oh. <coughs> yes, uh, Keeler is also a maniac on Oriental law. He came here especially to study this Ming robe. Oh, is that the famous robe? The one and only. Yes, it's the real thing, all right. <laughs> Mr. Moss, Mr. Nolan likes to see you one minute, please. Will you excuse me, please? I'll be back in a moment. Of course. Well, I've got to hand it to you. But how did you manage it? Very simple. Simple? <laughs> a Ming robe is easily traced. Yes, I know, but... How did you... Get in? Simpler yet. Did you ever know a collector who wasn't terribly vain? All I had to do was call and contend he had a fake robe. He instantly invited me over so he could gloat over my discomfiture. Oh. And I've repeatedly warned you to keep away from here, Spud. Okay, Chief, okay. But what about the pilot? What are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? There's a load waiting over the border. It's up to you to find a pilot, not me. I ain't been able to find one. Well, either you find one or I'll get someone to take your place. Now get out of here and don't show your mug around here again, do you understand?
this little Buddha was smuggled from Alasha Monastery, probably at the cost of hundreds of lives. Artistically, it is priceless. Actually, it's worth about $15,000. You're pretty well versed, aren't you? It's part of my job. Ready, fire. Do you still suspect the gentleman? Well, <laughs> even a curio collector might have a dual personality. You've heard of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yes, you remind me of them. Oh, now, Viola. Miss Avery, to you, Mr. Snooper. You're being very unkind. Are you going to open that door, or shall I have to call our host and inform him that... Hello. Uh, Anything wrong? Oh, no, no. Miss Avery was uh, just deliberating whether we should go in and have a cocktail or inform you that we're thirsty. Well, I would suggest that we join the other guests. I've neglected them frightfully. Shall we? Yes, let's do. May we soar on the wings of destiny to a haven of everlasting friendship, Miss Avery. Thank you, that's very appropriate. And there's hoping you have a parachute in case the wings of destiny fold up, Miss Avery. Oh, I wish you wouldn't joke about that. It's bad enough to have Father lock my plane up and have my license revoked. How dreadful. Well, if you knew what it meant to have be deprived of the one thing you crave, you'd understand my position. I understand your feelings, and I sympathize with you. Thanks. Do you fly, too? Oh, now and then. You have your own plane, Mr. Moss. Well, no. But so many of my friends are constantly urging me to use Urging their... you? Oh, say, introduce me. I'm dying to take off. Well, that could be arranged, but uh, I should hate to plot against your father. Oh, well, he needn't know about it. You're not any too safe on the ground. Oh, well, Mr. Keeler is quite right, my dear. Suppose something should happen. Oh, now what could happen to me? I've had 300 hours in the air and I'm perfectly healthy. Oh, please, come on. No, I'm afraid to take a chance, Miss Avery. Thanks to you, Mr. Killer. Sorry, old man, but we must be going. Oh, so soon? Yeah. As much as we hate to. Oh, excuse me? Not at all. <laughs> Give my regards to your wife when you see her. Yeah. You're a very silly girl if you don't stay clear of Mr. Moss, his home, and his plane. It's my honest opinion. Did I ask for your opinion? A little wisdom wouldn't hurt you, Viola. Wise people bore me terribly. Me too. Shall we go? We? Oui. I'd be delighted to see you go. Uh, oh, uh, Miss Avery was just saying something about leaving, Mr. Moss. Oh, but you can't go now. I'm having a mandarin dinner prepared in your honor. You must stay. Oh, well, I, I'd love to. But I... she's already accepted my invitation to dinner. Oh, I'm terribly disappointed. Or well, perhaps I could prevail upon you both to stay. Um, that would be delightful. Well, uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> well, I've been working on a corpse. Got his name. Yeah? Yeah. Say, you're mighty clever, Sullivan. Mighty clever. Oh, very hard. His name was James Dawson, better known as Flash. Here it is. Permanently grounded while flying a uh, grounded plane while uh, grounded. If you can figure that out. Uh... I got his last address, too. It's a year old, but it's something. Oh, good boy, Sullivan. Now, let's see if we can trace him to his latest address. Come yeah. on. two days ago. And it's a fine
fine mess you've made of everything. Poor Mr. Dawson will have a million fits when he sees how you've upset his things. Don't worry, lady. Flash Dawson had his last fit. He's dead. Oh, hold on. Hey, Sullivan, come here. What do you make of that? What do you mean, the hole in the paper? Yeah, the hole in the paper. That's liable to lead to something, you know. Now, the thing to do is to get a back issue. Find out what that ad said. Well, what do you do in that case? You get it. Oh. Hey, Sullivan, listen to this. Aviator wanted. Must be young. Healthy, fearless, ready to take a chance. Good pay. Box 364, morning record. That's fine. What's fine? Well, you big lummox, don't you get the connection? Why do you always ask me questions? Well, look at this. Fearless, ready to take a chance. Doesn't that sound like a racket? Now listen and see if my deduction isn't correct. Dawson phoned you to tip you off about smuggling. How would he know who the chief was if he wasn't working with him? Now, isn't it natural to suppose that he got the job by answering this ad? Why would Dawson want to turn informer then? Oh, I don't know. There might be a million reasons, none of which concern us. The thing we're interested in is catching that gang. Yeah, yeah, that's all. <laughs> now, look at this. The day after Dawson is killed, this ad reappears in every paper. Do you call that a coincidence? Well, what do you call it? I call it a break for us. I'm going to answer that ad and see what happens. Well, there he goes, Sullivan. You better keep this for me. Before you do anything, you better give me at least an hour. Why so long? Well, I may need a little time. It's hard to tell what might happen. You better let me go along with you. Oh, they know you as well as you know them. They don't know me. Maybe you're right at that. Well, here goes. I hope you know what you're doing. I don't. Tricky Thomas. Do you know him? The name is familiar. It seems as if I've heard it before. You're the man I want to see. About that letter. What you talking about, fella? That's all right, buddy. You don't have to put on any act from me. I'm Tricky Thomas, the guy that wrote it. How'd you get here? Well, I followed that dumb cluck you sent over to the newspaper office to bring the letter. It's a punk way to get a pilot, if you ask me. Why? Well, suppose some dick had smoked that ad and come poking around here. I guess we can take care of anybody that wants to poke around here. I guess you're right. What about that job? Is it still open? Yeah, that is of your tricky Thomas of the McDonald outfit. Here's my old pilot's license and some junk to prove I'm tricky Thomas. Well, what's the racket and how much do I get? Chinaman. You get 250 a load. Say, what is this? Charity work? Two fifty. <laughs> the last flyer dropped his load and we had to cut prices. Well, I'm not dropping anything. I'll tell you what I'll do. Three hundred dollars and I play ball. All right. That's a deal. But get this, Tricky. No cargo, no dough. You guys get away with murder. Us pilots ought to go on a strike or something. Well, take it or leave it. Well, oh, I'll take it, all right. When and where? I'll tell you when after I've checked up on you. One of the boys goes across the border with you. And you land the load at our field in Mercer Canyon. Yep. Spud talking. What plane you got ready? X-26. Ready now? If she's all ready, you got a flyer? Tricky Thomas. Say, I thought that whole McDowell outfit went up for a stretch. You better make sure you ain't got a phony, Spud. 
Okay, Joe. Okay. What's your other name, Tricky? What's the gag? What did you say if I told you Tricky's up the river? I'd say you were cracked. I'm not up the river because I skipped bail. That's why I need ready dough and a hideout. Say, do I look like a sucker? Wouldn't I be a chump to stick my neck in here if I wasn't right? What are we doing, Spud? I don't know. We need a flyer awful bad. And I'm him. That guy's all wet. I kind of believe you, Tricky. But we got to check up on you. All right, then. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait a minute. I can't let you go now. Why not? I'm not going to squeal. Look here. I'll send one of the boys with me to keep me company. That shows I'm all right, doesn't it? No, Tricky. You know too much now. You have to stay here till we find out for sure. Hello, Steve. This is Spud. Know anybody can identify Tricky Thomas of the Badown gang? All right. Bring him over here, will you? Sorry, Tricky, but I can't take a chance. Rod, you and Tiger take him downstairs and hold him until Steve gets here. I'll go over and see what the boss wants me to do. Got you. Come on. Keep watch, Red. Sit down over there. Hey, buddy, have you got the time? Ain't got a date, have you? Yes, I have. Well, maybe Steve will be here soon. Then you can go. Oh, yeah, sure. Seated in my silver chair. Can I come in, boss? All right. I had to come, Chief. I'm in a jam. Did you get a flyer? Yeah, I got one, but he may be a phony. I'll have to wait and double check on him. That's fine. What then? If he don't click, maybe Steve will get somebody. You can't depend on that. Time's too pressing. Well, we can't take a chance either, can we? What do you suggest? Take a load off your feet. This may work. Oh, hello, Miss Avery. Oh, hello there. How are you? I'm terribly sorry, but uh, I'm afraid I'll be unable to keep my engagement today. I've been called away on urgent business. I'll have to fly down to my ranch at once. Fly to your ranch? Oh, how thrilling! Say, why couldn't I go along? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, under the circumstances, I'm afraid you can't. You see, I might be unexpectedly detained, and you'd be forced to fly the ship back alone. But that would be glorious. Oh, do be an angel and let me go. Please. All right. I can't resist you. But not a word to a soul, understand? I don't want your father to be angry with me about anything. Now, how soon will you be ready to leave? Well, right now. Fine. I'll be waiting. All right. I've got a flyer, Spud. I'll go down and let this flyer bring the load bag alone. You can go now. Have a truck at the field ready for a pickup. Okay, Chief.
face, bud. How long are we going to stick around here? Till Steve gets here. I'm taking the other boys with me. We're landing a load pretty soon, and I got to go. Hey, I thought you said you didn't have another pilot. The chief just got another one. I sent Red outside to watch for Steve. If the mug he brings fails to identify this guy, let him have it. I ain't Trekkie Thomas, he's in a tough spot. Come on, step on it. You got a cigarette, Rod? No, I just smoked the last one, Ty. Never mind, I'll get one upstairs. Hey, sit down there. Shoot, Tiger, I got him. Turn on another light, Tiger. I'm going to give it to him now. Wait a minute, Rod. Why, we know he isn't tricky, Thomas, or else he wouldn't have pulled this. Yeah, I know, but you ain't running this show. We'll tie him up and wait till Steve gets here. All right, throw me that rope. Think you can have him alone? I'll take care of him. Well, I'm going up to the office. Not much of a ranch, but it will serve my purpose. Oh, I wouldn't care if it was the North Pole, just for the thrill of flying. Oh, you are an enthusiast, aren't you? <laughs> Shall we walk over? Savory, this is my ranch foreman, Mr. Lufkin. Savory? How do you do? And my old friend, Young Yao. How do you do? Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a little business to attend to. Do you mind? Not at all. All right, yeah. Rufkin, I'll turn Miss Avery over to you. How'd you like a cup of tea? Oh, I'd love it. Oh, that's fine. You see that Chang excels himself for our charming guest. Come along, Miss Avery.
All right. Well, come on, come on. Where's my letter for this load? One moment. Before I give letter, or you take Chinaman, you must leave a hostage with me. Hostage? <laughs> what for? To ensure my countrymen. Last time they die, remember? Yes, let them by bury it over airplane. Get killed. We will hurt it. Keep out of this. Listen, you don't need any hostage with me. This load will go through without accident. As a matter of fact, I'll fly it through myself. Will that satisfy you? No hostage, no Chinaman. All right. I'll leave you a hostage. How about the young lady who came down with me? Would that be satisfactory? Lady, all right. Make good hostage. Where's the letter? Thing. Hurry up now, I got the Chinaman aboard. Sing. Fly up. Hi, you Ed. Hello, Steve. Go on in. I'm waiting for you. Okay. Hello, Tiger. Hello, Steve. Where is that guy? Downstairs with Rod. Come on. Wait a minute. Give the boys a little shot of that cactus lightning. All right. Up and tell them all about it. Sure good stuff. But I just saw Steve Garlow go in there with a couple of his tough mugs and I'm not going to wait any longer. Right, Sullivan. The men will be right down. Put Dan on right away. Kind of stout, huh? <laughs> Come on, I'll take you downstairs. Nice tricky on King Tut. Oh, they huh? Keep your eye on him, Rod. And how? You two fellas get around front. Get your guns ready, fellas. Now take it easy. Come on. Now that, Red. Thanks, buddy, and so long, Steve. Adios. So long. Get his gun. Get him up in the air. Come on, take him out, boys. Put him in the car. What's the big idea? And you'll find out. Come on. Go on, get moving. Come on, Dan. Come on, out. Hey, wait a minute. Tiger Morgan, huh? Get his gun. Where's the young fellow came in here about an hour ago? I don't know what you're talking about. Take him out of the rest of them. Go on, get it going. Come on.
Easy. Goodbye, Lug. Give my regards to the boys when you get over there. Take them upstairs to the rest of them. Good thing Sullivan didn't wait for your time schedule, Baxter. Sullivan, I guess I'd better listen to some of your ideas after this. Your ideas, all right, son. You had time is short enough, that's all. Well, it's swell of you to take it that way. Yeah, never mind about that. What'd you find out? They got a plane, X-26. It's doing with a load right now. Well, where? Mercer Canyon. They got a ground crew over there for the pickup. Now, you get over there with the men. I'll get my plane up and cruise around in case somebody warns them and they Go. try to skip it. Go to it. Wait, wait, wait. Warm her up, Gus. Come on, Lufkin. I guess I'd better go. I see Mr. Walsh is preparing to leave. You know, go. You my hostage. Hostage? What do you mean? I mean you stay here. If Chinamen die on trip, you know go home. Why, you must be crazy. You can't hold me here. I know crazy. You see. Give you the letter, you fool. The load's gone. Lufkin, get that other ship out. We've got to catch that girl before she lands a load of Chinamen. Hurry! Get the covers off! Hurry the man with the gas! Yes, gas, confounded Lufkin. Why don't you keep these planes fueled? Step on it now. Ready, Bill? Yep. Warm and ready to go. Fine. Looks like he's a little bit late. Oh, no, he's just on time. Come on, boys, get him. Get him. Get up there. Come on, get up there. Come on, boys, get up.
All right, take those fellas along. Come on. All right, come on, Dan. I might have killed you. Say, what are you doing with this plane? Well, I was So you're in on this, too. I didn't know there was anyone in there. I just took the plane to get away from Moss. He was going to lead me over the border. No, I just went because I thought it was a chance to fly. You wouldn't take my tip, would you? You had to have your thrill, you stupid netwit. Oh, I know I am. I'm sorry. Sorry? What good's that going to do now? Don't you realize you're implicated in this? I've got to arrest you. All right. I'll take my medicine. That's Moss. I know the place. Well, I'll soon find out. Baxter. Up there. Well, who flew the X-26 in? I did. You brought these Chinamen over? Yes. Only get the other half of that letter, we'd have plenty of evidence. That's right. Well, there's your master smuggler. I told you we'd land one. Yeah, remember what you said about evidence. Keeping and catching is different. <laughs> yes, well, look at this. Now, we can only find the other half. I've got it! Oh, Get out. Come, on, you. Hey, come on, Take him out. Come on, take him out. 
and they match. Oh, boy, that's what I call bringing in the evidence. Yes, but Sullivan, remember what you said about that. Mm, maybe I said I'd resign. Well, may I will resign after I, after I find out what you're going to do with this girl. Well, there's nothing I can do but take her with me. Give me your handcuffs. I hate to do this, Viola. Hey! What am I going to tell Graves about this? Tell him I eloped with a secret agent that helped me solve the case. <laughs> and don't forget to turn in your resignation. 